Hi everybody, this is Fred from Creator and Sincenum and you're watching Impact Channel. Greetings everyone, we are here with Frederick Leclerc from Sincenum and Creator. Welcome back to Budapest. Well, well. Thank you. So, how does it feel to be back on the tour, on the stage again? Uh, it's great. We uh, This is the third show we're doing on this little run. Mm -hmm. uh, we play Bloodstock in the UK on Saturday, uh, the next day Alcatraz, and today we are Tuesday in uh, Budapest, and tomorrow Innsbruck, I believe, in Austria. Mm -hmm. And uh, it feels great. Bloodstock was my third show with, with the band. Because awesome. uh, I did two shows in 2019 when I joined in Chile. Uh, one headlining and one with uh, together with Slayer and Anthrax in Pentagram. And then we were supposed to do the European tour with uh, Lamb of God and Power Trip. Mm -hmm. And then Covid happened and the only thing we did uh, last year was uh, Vacan uh, streaming, Vacan Online or whatever the name, Vacan Worldwide I think was the name. But it's definitely not the same, you, you know, you need an audience really. Uh, it was great, it was still good, I guess for the fans it was better than nothing and uh, it was great that Vacan organized that but, uh, and uh, with, with Loud Blast, because I play with Loud Blast as well um, we did uh, three shows for Hellfest uh, and three, three songs, sorry, and it was the same thing, streaming, you know, no, uh, no crowd so uh, definitely when we played Bloodstock, even though uh, Creator is, uh, you know, violent and aggressive music we couldn't help but smile because it was really, it was great. Alcatraz was the same and uh, uh, in a way it was great because uh, we've all been touring for so long, you know. I'm not going to say that, wow, Covid is great, but I guess it just gave us time to refocus and being, you know, even more hungry for uh, for music and whatnot. So uh, that's great and I'm really looking forward for uh, uh, tonight. So do we. And how did you cope with this uh, whole pandemic thing emotionally and professionally? Um, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, my father passed away in November last year, so I couldn't, I couldn't care less for COVID. I mean, it just recentered my priorities, and I, I mean, this is very selfish and self-centered, but uh, since I lost half of my, you know, uh, foundation in life, COVID, COVID around me was just like, eh, you know, I didn't care if I was not going on tour, or I didn't care if, you know, that that's what matters to me the most. So, uh, but. Now, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, COVID is uh, it's not very good and it sucks, but like I said, I mean, this this has been my personal concern, mm -hmm. yeah. I see. The last time I saw you with uh, Sinsen in Budapest a couple of years ago, before, this, before the show I had the chance to chat with Joey and do a very good interview with him, but I wanted to know is, do you know what caused his death? Uh, that's not, uh, it's not my place to discuss, okay. uh, of course I know. Uh, I'm going to skip this question. No, no, you don't have to skip it. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, it's not my, like I said, well, yeah, right. you can skip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not my position. I mean, uh, the family, you know, uh, asked for privacy at that time, and uh, I respect that. Uh, it's just very sad. Yes, for sure. Yeah. How would you summarize his legacy? To me, it was more than, than a musician. So I guess for people, just like, oh, Dr. Jordi is a musician, obviously, you know, that because that's what he's famous for. But uh, to me, he was first and foremost a friend. So I've lost a friend uh, that was only 46 years old and uh, that hurts. So uh, I don't know, I mean, he was an amazing uh, musician, not only on drums, but also he wrote an amazing song. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were lucky enough to uh, uh, to, to play together uh, with him, you know, and uh, it was great. I mean, I I created Sinsanum, he contacted me, we were looking for a drummer, everything just fell into place, he came up with the name. Last shows he played uh, were with us. That's the uh, the last thing that he played, and uh, I was just uh, I was doing an interview. Uh, um, I have a column in, in a Japanese magazine called Young Guitar, mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing it yesterday typing, and I just yeah I just remember that the, the last song that he played uh, ever was uh, my swan song, uh, and uh, I guess you know like the title it's. Yeah. And that's a song that he really loved. I remember he was just like, yeah, he felt something about it. So it's a little, you know, a little strange to think about it now. And I've, so I've been, you know, listening to the song again and again. And uh, I'm still, I'm still processing the fact that, 
you know, the fact that he's gone. But um, yeah. That's What's least. the first memory or thing that crosses your mind when you think about him? Uh, Moby Danger, because that's that's how we uh, that's how we used to greet each other. All right. Like of all the messages was like M A, that stands for Moby Danger. M A, you know. So I, the last text I got from him was that you know M A. Uh, actually, checking my phone just to be uh, correct. M A doesn't leave ever, same as your brother. So yeah. that's the last text I got from him. I'm always M A. So yeah. I'm not going to name that media that you criticized not so long time ago on Twitter yeah. because you don't deserve that. No. Um, don't you think that the heavy metal media is slowly getting into this tabloid and the yellow press kind of thing recently? Yeah, uh, certain medias are taking certain sentences out of context, mm -hmm. putting them out. Maybe that's, it's always been the case. I don't know, I was maybe more uh, innocent when I was a, a metal fan or I did, when I discovered music I was just like, oh wow. Uh, I didn't see it that way, but in the recent years, I think you're right. I think it is turning into, it's always been a little bit of tabloid, mm -hmm. really. But I guess also you need to, because of internet and whatnot, you need to really grasp, uh, grab people's attention. Right. So that's probably why they just come up with like, out of context, uh, name of the musician criticizes COVID or blah, blah, blah. Or we, we, we released a statement, we've seen Sainam, all they care about was that sentence that we said we tried everything to save him, but and they were just like, ah, you know, monetize on that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I don't know, maybe they're gonna see that and use that sentence again. You know, f them. Um, I don't know, I mean, yeah, certain, certain websites are doing that. So, uh, but then again, that's how you, you, you grab people's attention. So right. it's their job, I suppose. I don't know. Once I did an interview with Marty Friedman a couple of years ago and uh, I asked him what he would do if he was not a musician. How would he express himself? Mm -hmm. And he said because he came from a household that uh, was full of you know, good English speaking people, mm -hmm. he would be maybe a proofreader as he wasn't a if he wasn't a musician. He said he's kind of a grammar Nazi. Right, right. A couple of days later I saw the interview posted on one of the websites saying Marty Friedman, I'm a Nazi or something. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a that's a shock. All right, okay, yeah. Maybe yeah. there's a grammar Nazi, but that was just you know twenty minutes interview with that one small sentence. I I just saw a one of these website taking a sentence out of context. That's uh, Josh who played or still plays in Stone Sour. Mm -hmm. That said, uh, Edward uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, influenced me more on keyboards than he did on guitar. Mm -hmm. So obviously, when you read that, you're like, oh, what the fuck? And then actually, when you read it, he's just saying that. He respects the musician, but Eddie Van Halen influenced all the musicians that influenced him, which is the same with me. So I totally understand that. And so he's just joking and saying, yeah, actually he had more an impact on me as a keyboard player because he prefers the Sammy Hager, blah, blah. Long story short, this is not the sentence they took out. It's not what the guy is saying. And it's quite often the same. Uh, so when someone is asked a question about COVID and I'm just like, oh, I've got the double, you know, double vaccination, I'm good and I think people should do the same. That's what they take out and then people are just, you know, and you don't see the full explanation. So, then again. I heard a couple of days ago that you are about to continue the band Sing Sing and you're going to dedicate the next album to Joey. Yeah. Bird. Do you have any candidate for the uh, next drummer? Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Frank. Is for public now? Not now, no. <laughs> No, no, but uh, I, yeah, yeah, I have, I've been talking to, uh, to a friend of mine mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who can do that, yeah. When can you expect a new album? Uh, I don't know, right now the, the, my priority is to, uh, to work on a Creator, okay. uh, because we started last year, we started rehearsing, we, we were doing like two weeks uh, rehearsal in, in Germany, then I went back two weeks at home, uh, I could visit my father as well, I mean, it was just like a nice break because my father was... Uh, not doing too well. Uh, then, uh, then we stopped. The day we finished the pre-production, uh, I, I went back to bed and then got woken up at 3 a.m. My father passed away, but it was right on time, so I had finished my job. Uh, and then we started again uh, last week before Bloodstock. Uh, we've done uh, one week of uh, pre-production for the new album. Then we rehearsed the set list for mini run. Uh, then we have a few days off after uh, Austria. We have two more shows, two, two more festivals in Spain. 
right now, so far so good. We'll see. And then back to we're going back to Germany to finish the pre-production and then recording, and then we we will release it, you know, whatever. Okay. Sometime soon. But uh, the problem is right now because it's still unsure. We we just want to make sure that we can release the album and then go on tour. You know, so otherwise it's not really uh, ideal to release an album and then sit on it. So uh, right. you know. But we feel very confident about the, the um, about the, the new material. It's really good, and I'm I am of course very very excited. But I think the rest of the band is as well, just as much as me, which is good. And so, when uh, we will be done with Creator, uh, I will start the process uh, of yeah working on Sinsenam again, and then see how that inter you know how that interferes or not with creator. Creator remains my priority, obviously, and same thing, I don't know. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure. But we, we might release one song very soon anyway, because uh, we were talking about it uh, with Stefan uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I think it'd be nice just to release something to play it off of. You know, uh, who's going to be the producer of the new album, Andy Steve again? For uh, Creator? Yeah. Uh, no, it's, I don't think it's Andy. It's still it's actually, it's still actually uh, unsure. So uh, um, Miller mentioned uh, Arthur uh, um, a few months ago, and we're still you know we're still in, in the process of uh, right now. What's important for us? We we go by uh, you know point of focus. Right now we are shows. So we you know set list which is here that you can't see. Uh, uh, that's that's. That we need to focus on this, and then we will go back and you know work on it. But yeah, did you have a chance to contribute to the new album with any songs? Um, most of the stuff is from Miller. Yes. We've all been arranging the songs together. There's one song in particular where I brought uh, more to it. A few here and there. So, uh, but uh, it's hard as when you enter, you know, just to be like, and hey, here are all the songs, and you know. So I'm, I'm taking my time just to understand how it works, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a song where uh, I've uh, contributed on uh, uh, riffs and melodies and whatnot. And the others like uh, tweaking stuff here and there. What are your favorite creator albums by decade? For this one, for, well, the decade before, uh, I guess, uh, would be probably uh, Gods of Violence. Uh, before that, Enemy of God. In the 90s, uh, Actually, I, I love uh, Cause for Conflict. And the 80s, uh, uh, Extreme Aggression. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there were plenty of rumors about the uh, German Big Four or Big Three, depending on how many events we are talking about in this case. <laughs> Do you see any hope to bring this two together with Destruction, Southern, and Creator? Maybe even with Tonker? Uh.